everybody. Good morning. How are you? No. Have you all had coffee? No. Shit. <laughs> okay, so this, you know, a lot of our talks are really all about us, and that's what this is. So um, <laughs> this is my opportunity to work out my trauma of being an academic. So um, I live, I feel like a dual existence, a split personality where I live in happy improv land, and I'm... Um, an improviser and I use improv and then I work in academia as well as a professor and it's just a little it's a little different so sometimes I feel that I have two choices I can either go in the direction of happy land um, where people love each other and they're collaborative and oh Thank you. And, um, and they're spontaneous and flexible and agile and supportive. Or I can live in the world of academia where people tend to be, not always, competitive and hierarchical and scarcity-based and fear-based and silo-based. And um, it's a dilemma. Sometimes I feel the choice is between love and justice. Um, so I have struggled with this, and, and since I can't quite quit my day job yet, um, I have thought about ways to integrate. Integrate um, the, the philosophy of improv, the, the world of improv, of course, into um, academic life. And, of course, um, those of us who live in the world of academia know that we have to publish. How many academics types are there in the room? Oh my God, my people, awesome. Okay, so, you know, we have to publish. Um, it, where's Pablo, is Pablo here? Pablo, Pablo. So, um, Pablo Suarez, if you don't know, um, is the lovely gentleman in the back of the room who works for the Red Cross and is taking um, applied improvisation into extremely important um, places in the world. And um, at the Berlin conference, um, Pablo said, hey, I want to do a special edition of games in our humanitarian journal, I'm abbreviating. Um, would you maybe be interested in writing an article? And of course, you know, yes and or on all that. Um, so I, I bet on that. And anybody want to take a guess what that number is? No, <laughs> how many words I wrote? <laughs> how many chocolate bars I ate while I was writing? No. Uh, no. Now, how much I got paid? No, that would be in the negative. No. <laughs> this number, this number is the number of days between that invitation and the, the day the article actually came out. Now, I will say that I had great collaborators, and, and I will say that none of the, um, the slog was due to Pablo because, of course, he was trying to push this rock up a hill, but the rock is a heavy rock. It's an academic rock. It's filled with bureaucracy and deadlines and standards and limits and critical minds and things that maybe make improv a little more difficult. Um, I had amazing collaborators, two um, of our most wonderful applied improvisers who are not here um, at this conference. Um, and I just want to show you a couple of images of us along the way um, in this process. So the first was um, Viv McWaters from Australia. Um, <laughs> and um, they, you know, they would sort of say, well, we need the revisions by next Tuesday. And we're like, oh my God, we don't have a life, okay. Um, and then the other wonderful collaborator was uh, Raymond Van Drael from uh, Holland. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was a challenging collaboration, but we, we just had so much fun. And um, the other thing about um, being an academic, so if you don't know, like one of the things about being an academic, if you write, 
it only counts if you're the first author. So like so much for collaboration, like let's write together, me first, you know. Um, but since I was the only one actually sort of living in a university, they were kind and let me do that. But there are costs to being the first author, which means you get all the edits, you get all the communication, you get all the headaches, you get, you know, so this is me um, toward the end. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I mean, we got there, we got there. Um, so 644 days later, we, we have an article. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think maybe two or three people have read it. <laughs> That's the other downside of academia is like, you know, it's not the, the most public way to spread the word. But, you know, so we struggle with this. We struggle with, you know, is it worth all that effort to create sort of a, an article that may or may not actually have a life outside of our own arena? So publishing is one struggle around which uh, many of us have written books and, and academia is another world where, you know, the, the two... Uh, paths may or may not meet in all the best ways. Uh, the other ways in which um, I've tried to integrate uh, improv into academia, um, Paul mentioned uh, the Delphi study uh, and asked me yesterday if I would talk about it. Paul, I, I did the Delphi study. It was uh, a research study about what is impi implied improvisation uh, through the poll of experts. And I just want to reiterate that the reason I agreed to do this is because I thought I would go to Greece. And, you know, <laughs> and, you know, it still hasn't happened. But the Delphi study is up where? Where is it that people can see it? On it's on a website somewhere. I, I'm, I'm sure you'll find it. Okay. Um, <laughs> The, the next way that I've integrated, uh, uh, of course, is I've been able to teach. I've been very lucky. I've had innovative people in my departments. This is me teaching. Uh, where's Chris? Chris Esparza, who is gr great to be my wonderful partner at the University of Oregon teaching um, improv for dispute resolution at the law school. And I teach improv for conflict resolution in my um, graduate program. And so there have been wonderful ways to actually bring this uh, art into the university life. But I did think... You know, it's not really integration. I feel like I'm still patching onto the quilt, you know, really still trying to patch on the quilt. So I was trying to think about how to make how to make it better for me and how to ultimately do a better job. So for those of you who know me and maybe those who don't, uh, I am a professor of conflict resolution. That's what I do. Um, this is one of my faculty meetings. <laughs> <laughs> And you think I'm kidding. <laughs> um, you know, it's an interesting approach. You know, they say those who go into, you know, whatever. So, you know, we have a few issues. Um, you know, uh, university life is full of hierarchy. Um, it's full of ego. Um, you have a hundred people in the room, often who all think they're the smartest. But um, so uh, I love this. So that um, ego is I or one. I get one over knowledge. Um, the more the knowledge, the lesser the ego. The lesser the knowledge, the more the ego. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And that, that wouldn't necessarily be true if you think about sort of content knowledge. But I actually began to realize that the knowledge that was fueling so much ego in these environments or the lack of knowledge was the knowledge that we have. And this is where Belina and I have kind of done a little bit of the same talk, um, which is that the, the knowledge that is really needed is the knowledge that we uh, have um, around what improv and improvisation and applied improvisation can do. So. Um, it's really about, I mean, I don't think single-handedly I'm going to change academia, but a new paradigm around not just doing improv classes, or, but actually really beginning to think about university life and higher education and um, academia in, in a different way. Uh, I know it's a, a, a lot of heavy lifting, um, and I don't expect to change the structure entirely. Um, but I, I think about actually the concept of compassion, um, which is defined here as a feeling of deep sorrow for another who is stricken by misfortune, accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate the suffering. And I actually think about the fact that a lot of the people in these structures and environments are suffering. They're suffering from that isolation and that competitiveness and that hierarchy. And the misfortune is that they don't have the gift that, that we have. Um, 
So I, I suddenly get swelled with gratitude that um, we have this thing and we're doing this thing together. And I, and I realize I have to actually spill that gratitude over into this other world that I resist. So that academia, I have to be grateful for that because it does things like give me money to come to resorts and call it work, <laughs> you know, things like that. And so trying to uh, bring that gratitude to all of it. Um, this, this is a, a slide I used last year. If I were really in my professor mode, I'd be testing you to see if you remember. Um, but I won't. Uh, so this is an almost dead frog, and it is uh, referencing a quote by E.B. White, who said, humor is like a frog. Um, you can dissect it, but it dies in the process. And I, I have been afraid of that related to improv, you know, that if we continue to analyze it or dissect it or write about it in these kind of quantified ways that we're gonna kill it. Um, and I realize that we actually aren't gonna analyze it. We're just gonna carry the frog with us into everything we do, you know, that it is really about being that frog. And so um, I have decided I'm going to be the uh, academic improv fairy um, and I'm just going to sort of spread all the goodwill and the yes ands and the supports and the collaborations and the, the things that we do anywhere I can go, even with the mm, biggest challenges, and um, cut through those threads of hierarchy and uh, academia. Uh, I'm going to spread the joy. AIN has already given me an opportunity to learn something new for my faculty meeting. So. Right? So, so if I wear this at every faculty meeting, I'm not sure anyone will notice, first of all. <laughs> but it might make them laugh and make them lighten up. Um, overall, uh, to make uh, the world of academia and uh, education a nicer place, a better place, because you know we're there to educate, and we need to educate about many things, not just content. Um, we had a wonderful day the other day, the AIN Fringe Day. Um, and I'm going to call on you, and actually, those of you who were in that day, I'm going to ask you to actually do all three of our symbols. So if you were in that day, we had a day on looking at academia um, and applied improv. So you were, if you were there with us, please stand up. Okay, so we developed three symbols. Um, the first was for um, what is an academic? The second was, what is an improviser? Cha 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 cha! <laughs> and the third, and this is our dream come true, it's what we're all working for, is an academic improviser. My partner and colleague, Simaro Tonin, yes. So, so if you would like to become an academic improviser, just, you know, walk around like this for the next few days and you're in. Um, <laughs> So I will say it's allowed me to be happier. Um, it's, you know, go to the beach, that also helps. Um, and um, it's our job and our mission to spread this love. And um, thank you. Have a great conference. <laughs> <laughs>